Good afternoon, gentlemen. Today we will talk about uh, dimensional analysis. Dimensional analysis is a technique used to understand a phenomenon when the exact solution of the problem at hand is not known. In other words, when you have only partial knowledge of a problem, you try to find out in an empirical manner what could be the nature of the problem in a mathematical sense. It is uh, in, in case of resistance of shift, we know that resistance is a complex phenomenon. It depends on certain variables, but we are not in a position to find out the functionality of resistance with regard to variables exactly. In that case, it is possible to find out and a an approximate relationship between the variables and the quantity that is in our case resistance through a dimensional analysis procedure. Uh, basically, this is dimensional analysis is a technique when the result or the uh, quantity in our case resistance is expressed in terms of certain variables, known variables, we try to achieve the dimensional homogeneity between resistance and the variables. By that process, we can find out the relationship between the variables and the quantity at hand. That is, the dimensions of the left hand side of the quantity must be equal to the dimensions of the right hand side of the quantity. Um, this is sometimes very helpful as we will see in case of resistance which gives very interesting results. Uh, in general, in case of mechanics of fluids and solids, there are three basic dimensions on which uh, all quantities can be defined. That is length L or length dimension L which is any linear dimension, mass dimension M and time. These are the three basic dimensions based on which we can find the dimension of any other variable. Let us take an example of speed, speed V the dimension of which is as we know a distance travelled over a period of time. So, it will be distance with length dimension over time dimension that is L over T. Similarly, if you take acceleration A is speed per unit time sorry rate of, change of rate of change of velocity per unit time that is speed divided by time come to L over T square. Similarly, if you take the force F is mass into acceleration, therefore, it is m L over T square and like this we can define all dimensions. Now, if in case of resistance of shift, the variables that affect resistance that influence resistance can be written as we can list them first of course is speed v size of the body size of the body can be expressed as a linear dimension l that is length dimension is L, area dimension is L square and volume dimension is L cube. Then you have density of fluid in which the body is moving, mass density, 
row which is mass per unit volume viscosity of the fluid mu acceleration due to gravity we have seen that the wave making resistance is a function of gravity g and pressure we have talked about pressure in some detail that is p now if we write this in a equation form we will say r is a function of or r is proportional to there may be a constant of proportionality we can write rho to the power a g to the power b l to the power c mu to the power d g to the power e and p to the power f now this is a very general solution we have just written down here the variables g l rho mu g and p raised to uh, different powers which we do not know and we have said proportional to so there could be a proportionality constant somewhere this is a very general form of expressing the resistance as, as a function of variables which we think affect resistance understand that this is only an approximate relationship we will try to find out if we can get a better relationship than this by equating the dimensions of left hand side with those of the right hand side therefore it is now necessary for us to find out the dimensions of all the variables that we have written here. Now, speed dimension is L by T, size of the body, length dimension L, rho is mass per unit volume, m by L cubed, mu we will find out in a short while, g is L over T square and pressure P is force per unit area, right? It will be M over L T square, is that right? Now, the mu, what is mu is the coefficient of viscosity, right? Representing the viscosity of the fluid. How do you know what is the unit of mu? Uh, mu is we have seen that mu is the shearing force between two layers of fluid or solid and fluid basically it is a shearing force so it will depend on uh, the force viscous force will depend on what will depend on we can say mu coefficient of viscosity area into the rate of change of velocity in the transverse direction is the one layer of fluid moving over another layer of fluid the difference between the velocities that is du by dy y representing the transverse direction is that clear ok now let us do a small dimensional analysis for this f is we have seen f m l over t square is not it mu a is l square del u del y we can say this is velocity this is distance so l over t into 1 by l right what do we get please tell me M mu L square by T. So, what is the unit of mu? Therefore, M L by T square into T by L square, right? That is M by L into T. Is that right? Okay. One more quantity we will use slightly later is the coefficient of kinematic viscosity this is uh, mu is co 
coefficient of viscosity and nu is coefficient of kinematic viscosity where nu is represented as nu over rho so the unit of nu therefore becomes you can see m divided by lt into okay that is l square by t coefficient of kinematic viscosity is l square by t okay now let us go back to our resistance equation and see dimensionally whether we can find something we have got this equation r is proportional to rho to the power a v to the power b l to the power c mu to the power d g to the power e and p to the power f now if we put it put them in the dimensions that we have uh, defined now ml by t square is equal to m by l cube to the power a l by t to the power b l to the power c mu power d and L by T square to the power E and M by L T square to the power F. Okay. So now, if we equate the coefficients of M, L, and T separately between the left hand side and right hand side, we will arrive at three equations. Coefficient of mu M, let us take M left hand side is 1, right hand side will become A plus D plus F, right. If we take the coefficients of L, just 1 equal to minus 3A plus B plus C minus D plus E minus F. Is that right? And if I take the coefficient of C, you see minus 2 is equal to minus B minus D minus 2E minus 2F. <coughs> we can reduce these six variables to 3 by redefining a, B and C. You can see here from equation 1, first line, we can see A is equal to 1 minus D minus F. From the last line, we can say B is equal to 2 minus D minus 2 E minus 2 F, right? And C is equal to, we can now do what for C from here, from it, the middle line, we can put C and put the values of A and B as we have found and C will come out to be 2 minus D plus E. Simple arithmetic, you can just put the values and see. So, you get A, B and C in terms of D, E and F. Okay? So, then R can be written as proportional to rho to the power 1 minus d minus f, v to the power 2 minus d minus 2 e minus 2 f, l to the power 2 minus d plus e, mu to the power d, g to the power e, and p to the power f, right. This 
is equal to if I take out you can see I can take the rho v square l square if I take out the constant quantity and put all the quantities which are raised to d separately those which are raised to e separately and those which are raised to f separately I will get mu divided by rho v l to the power d g l by v square to the power e and e divided by rho v square to the power f. This equation is what we find by dimensional analysis. Am I clear? Yes, very interesting equation. I can spend some time on, on this. What does it indicate to us? Resistance is a function of three quantities. The first quantity is mu divided by rho VL, second quantity is GL by V square, third quantity P by rho V square. It is a function of three quantities and the function nature would perhaps depend on the shape of the body. Therefore, if I have two bodies which are geometrically similar, that is the shape is same, only the linear dimensions of one body is exact proportion to the linear dimension of another body. Then you can see that these quantities are dimensionless and constant and the functional relationship will remain same. Therefore, this quantity multiplied with this, sorry, uh, these quantities will, this functional function d, e and f will be same for two geometrically similar bodies. Is that clear? No, perhaps that is not very clear. We will explain it further. Let me write this equation again. L square. Let us look at this other equation L square. It is a area uh, function by our definition. We have said area is length into length, right. So, this we can write as the weighted surface of the body or the surface of the ship that is weighted by the water. We write in general this is a function of what is mu by rho? Mu divided by rho is mu, is not it? Kinematic coefficient of viscosity. I can also write it in the reverse manner. What is shown here is mu divided by Vl. I can write the same thing as Vl over mu. Since my function is of general nature, I can write this. Yes. Next quantity is GL by V square. Similarly, I can write this as V square by GL, right? Or I can write it in the form of square root of this quantity, that is V over root GL. Is the same thing? Do you agree with me? I have written here GL by V square. Since my function nature is general, I could also write this as v square divided by g l or square root of this that is v over root g l. Yes? And the last quantity. Does anything look familiar here? What is R divided by half rho V square into F? This is general drag coefficient of a body in water. A drag coefficient is defined as total drag divided by half rho A V square. This is generally represented as Pt, that is coefficient of total resistance.
equal to R t divided by half rho s t square. V L over nu, the famous Reynolds number and V over root G L is the true number. So, what we get here is R divided by half rho S D square that is P T is a function of Reynolds number, crude number and pressure coefficient P by rho V square. Okay. Crude number is very interesting. Normally, in ship terms, we use the term called V over root L. Have you heard V over root L? When somebody represents a quantity called V over root L, normally V is expressed in knots. V over root L is generally given as V in knots divided by L in feet. This is a common use of ship terms. We will see why this term has been generated, which is so unscientific. It is not dimensionless and V is in knots and L is in feet, but we very commonly use V, v over root L. And we can see that between root number V over root G L and V over root L, there is only a difference of a constant. Can you see that? Normally, we have decided at the beginning of this course that we will be looking at all the problems in SI units. The SI unit V should have been uh, V over root G L, V should have been meters per second, G should have been meters per second square and L should have been meters. And so, this becomes dimensionless, root number becomes dimensionless. Now, between this quantity V over root L where V is represented in knots and L is represented in feet, you will find between this and this there is a difference of a constant only. So, that constant I will give you that is F n equal to 0.298 V k over root L, L in feet or V k over root L in feet is equal to 3.355 F n. Okay. So, crude number is normally represented as V over root G L and if it stays as root V over root G L, then V is in meters per second, G is in meters per second square and L is in feet, uh, L is in meters. But if somebody refers to a quantity V over root L without further elaboration, it is to be taken that V is in knots and L is in feet. Is that clear? So, if no dimension is mentioned, somebody refers to V over root L, it is not a dimensionless number, it is V in knots and L in feet. Okay. If you recall, when we looked at the components of resistance, we had said that there are basically two major components, wave making resistance and viscous resistance or pressure resistance and viscous resistance. This is what we had said. Of the viscous resistance, we had said that the major component is the frictional resistance component. William Froude, way back in 1868, 1868 means about 134, uh, 5 years back, laid down a postulated a law which we still use. It is surprising that a law without a proper scientific background was enunciated long back. It was so well laid out that we still use it today. Uh, he said 
the resistance of the chip can be divided into two parts frictional resistance and all other resistance which is called the residuary resistance that is rf plus rr where rf is frictional resistance and rr is residuary resistance okay so in rf looking at it now not then but now rf will consist of two dimensional frictional resistance and three dimensional frictional resistance and rr will consist of frictional resistance and all other components of frictional resistance is that clear okay now fruit then laid down a hypothesis which is known as law of comparison this law stated that i am writing down the residuary resistance of geometrically similar chip is in the ratio of the cube of their linear dimensions their speeds are in the ratio of square root of their linear dimension okay this is the famous law of comparison enunciated by sir william uh, no i don't know whether he was knighted or not by william prout in the year 1868 what does it say it says that if the speeds of two geometrically similar chips are in the ratio of their linear dimensions then the residual resistance component of their resistance will be in the ratio of the cube of the linear dimension so th if the ratio of linear dimension if i have two ships designated by suffix 1 and suffix 2 then if they are geometrically similar then l1 by l2 can be written can have a ratio of say lambda which can which we can call scale ratio okay if that is so and the two ships are moved at speeds v1 and v2 in such a manner that v1 by v2 is equal to square root of lambda this is what it says isn't it then rr1 by rr2 will be in the ratio of lambda q is that understood this is the law of comparison not at all complicated it's very simple it says if two ships are geometrically similar and their ratios are in the length ratios are are constant any length measurement you take if they are constant then you can understand the areas will be in the ratio of lambda square and volume will be in the ratio of lambda cube therefore displacement will be in the ratio of lambda cube if that is so and they are moving at the so called corresponding speeds 
these speeds are normally called corresponding speeds. That means the speeds are proportional to square root of lambda. Then the residual resistance is proportional to lambda q. The big advantage coming out of this is very simple. Instead of making two big ships geometrically similar, we can make one small ship and one big ship geometrically similar and the small one we can test in a model time and find out the residual resistance by some means, we will see how we can do that. If we can do that, we have a good idea of the residual resistance. Okay. So, what is the, what does this mean? If L1 by L2 equal to lambda and V1 by V2 equal to square root of lambda, what is V over root L? That is V over root L is constant. So, this corresponding speed gives us corresponding speed means means v over root l of first ship is equal to v over root l of second ship or crude numbers are same. Is that correct? So, what William Froude said as corresponding speed is nothing but at the same crude number. If two shifts are geometrically similar, their residual resistances are in proportion of lambda cube if they are moving at same crude number. You understand? Right. Now, residual resistance. C r, what is C r? Now, look at the C r 1 and C r 2, let us compare. C r 1 will be r r 1 divided by <coughs> half rho s 1 v 1 square, that is equal to R R 2 into R R 2 divided by lambda cube, right? R R 1 by R R 2 you have written as lambda cube, is not it? So, R R 2 by lambda cube divided by half rho is same, S 1, what will happen to S 1? S 2 divided by lambda square and V 1 square. What, do you, what does it give us? You see the lambda cubes will cancel, am I right? And you get half rho S 2 V 2 square, which is equal to C R 2. Okay. So, what does it mean? If two shifts are geometrically similar and they are moving at the same crude number, then the residual resistance coefficients are constant. Is that correct? Is it understood? No doubts. Okay. Now, we have got the residual resistance constant. Let us look at the equation we had formulated using dimensional analysis. Let us look at this equation. If for a moment I consider the fluid as non viscous, then the dependence on Reynolds number will vanish, right. So, we will have only dependence on friction, friction uh, fluid number and pressure coefficient, and this Cp will become Cr because Cf will not be there anymore. 
if we consider a non viscous fluid you understand that yes so for a non viscous fluid for a non viscous fluid dependence of the c ct is equal to cr because cf is zero and this will be a function of fluid number and p by rho v square <coughs> okay now let's look at this p by rho v square a little bit what is this p p is the total pressure we have seen last class that p will be equal to atmospheric pressure plus the static water head plus dynamic water head right between a ship and model this similarity of this total pressure is impossible to be achieved because whether it is a towing tank or a ship the atmospheric pressure is constant isn't it therefore you cannot reduce the atmospheric pressure in a towing tank by scaling it down but fortunately for us atmospheric pressure doesn't affect resistance very much in normal circumstances we will see the abnormal circumstances little later so what happens therefore that you neglect from this p subtract from this p the atmospheric pressure so you have only the static water head and any dynamic pressure that between two geometrically similar bodies that is proportional to the length dimension itself you can say the static water head represents this if you have h1 for the big ship and h2 for the small ship it will be in the ratio of the length so therefore p is proportional to length mind you remember that ignoring atmospheric pressure and rho is same and v is proportional to square root of lambda therefore p by rho v square is same as fluid number v over root l yeah if i represent p by l then it becomes l by v square rho being a constant right so this becomes this dependence on p by v square vanishes if we are ignoring the atmospheric pressure so we can write this as a function of fluid number only is that clear in which case will atmospheric pressure become important therefore we have to find out is there a case when atmospheric pressure becomes important atmospheric pressure will become important when the pressure falls to very low values of the order of atmospheric pressure or less than that that is a case that occurs in cavitating if there is any cavitating flow then this assumption we have made cannot be held but in normal merchant ships we do not consider cavitation for resistance purposes therefore it can be written as a function of fluid number only mind you we have taken non viscous fluid if i have non viscous fluid the ship moving in non viscous fluid and the model moving in non viscous fluid <coughs> then the total resistance i measure for the model we we'll, i just multiply by lambda q i get the total resistance of the ship do you understand this but unfortunately water is not non viscous so what do i do if going back to our formal analogy if we take the ship down completely submerged in water then wave making resistance will vanish there will be no wave making as we have seen before therefore dependence on gravity will vanish or wave making resistance will vanish so cr will become zero for a submerged body cr equal to 0 therefore ct will become equal to cf by our separation of resistance to two parts frictional resistance and residual resistance the residual resistance 
primarily consisting of wave making will vanish and therefore, C t will become equal to C s and that will become a function of Reynolds function. Is that clear? Yes. So, in general now the ship is neither submerged nor moving in a non viscous fluid. So, generally we can write C t is equal to C s plus C r and a function of a combined function of R m and F m or by this analysis if we consider this is equal to this we get C s and this we get C r then we can also write F 1 of Reynolds number plus F 2 of Schur number. We can separate the effects of Reynolds number and Schur number. Am I clear? This is the fundamental relationship of surface ship resistance we obtain from dimensional analysis, and this is justified. This justifies the Schur law of comparison between two geometrically similar shapes. Okay. So, for geometrically similar ships, if we can find out C s by some means and move the model at corresponding speed, then I can get the C r of the model and I get the total, total resistance coefficient for the ship. Very simple. How do I get C s? How do I get C s of a similar ship. Just like I made a law of comparison for residual resistance, I can also form a law of comparison of for frictional resistance. That would mean that R n 1 should be equal to R n 2. If fruit number of model and ship were same and residual resistance coefficient are same, if I can make the Reynolds number of the ship and that of the model same, then I will get the frictional resistance coefficient same. Do you understand? Now, let us see this what V 1 L 1 by mu 1 mu coefficient of viscosity is same or nearly same. So, we can ignore that or V 1 L 1 equal to V 2 L 2 or V 1 is equal to V 2 L 2 by L 1. Sorry? No, 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 no. V 1 equal to V 2 into L 2 by L 1 or uh, using our previous nomenclature V 2 is equal to V 1 L 1 by L 2, L 1 by L 2 we have said lambda, am I right? What does this mean? This of course means that uh, in one assumption we have made, we have cancelled the mu on le left hand side and right hand side. That means, they are moving in the same viscous fluid. If I want to move my ship, my model now in water having the same viscosity, to have Reynolds similarity, I must move the model at a scale at a speed of the ship multiplied with the factor lambda. But for fruit number, what did I have? I had for F n 1 equal to F n 2, what did I have? V 2 is equal to V 1 into 1 over lambda square root lambda, right? This is very interesting. You see now, suppose I have got a ship which is 125 meters long and a model at 1 is to 25 scale, 5 meters long. I want to move this model at 5 meters at a particular speed and predict the resistance. Suppose the model moves at 2 meters per second, then what is V 2? 
V2 will be V1 2 meters per second, sorry, if we say uh, we, we have not defined, defined which is bigger and which is smaller in this whole this thing, right. Let us say V2 is the model speed, okay, that is 2 meters per second. What will be V1? Lambda is 5. V1 will be V2 into 5. Lambda is 25. 25. 125 meter. Let us write the question properly. Length of ship is 125 meters. Length of model 5 meters. Lambda 25 and square root lambda 5. Right? Now, Vm is equal to V s into 1 over square root of lambda, right. Say V s, say V s is equal to 10 meters per second, 20 knots, let us say, approximately 0.5144 divide that. Then what is V m? 10 into 1 by 5 that is 2 meters per second for S n similarity, right. Now, for Reynolds similarity, R n similarity, what will be V m? 10 into 25, right, 250 meters per second in water, mind you. Okay. So, you see you cannot attain Reynolds similarity physically in a towing tank, that is out of question. So, what are the alternatives available to us? Alternative available to us is we can have a fluid of different viscosity and then maybe speed will come down a little bit or we can adjust the speed. Typically different viscosity means you come to air a wind tunnel test perhaps, but then the test in air is quite different from test in water because air is compressible and water is incompressible, other characteristics change. Therefore, strictly you cannot test a ship in air and extrapolate Reynolds similarity to get the CS because air apart from being a, being a fluid, it has different physical characteristics than water kinematic similarity may not be attained. Plus, there are other problems that air surface one uh, water air interface you cannot generate. So, there will be other problems. So, normally what is done while trying to predict the resistance of a ship from a model is that if we can have the frictional uh, resistance coefficient for a large number of two dimensional bodies or three dimensional bodies not going up to the ship, but at a smaller length and smaller size and we could perhaps extrapolate it to ship length and say that this is how the frictional resistance will be. Then perhaps we can do it. For this purpose, this is the basis on which the present model tests are conducted. Now, model experiments as enunciated by William Froude and as we have discussed now can be written down in the following steps. Model is geometrically similar, this is the first step. And runs at corresponding speed ok. Second, while running the model you have to measure the total resistance that is the easiest things to measure. Measure the speed and total resistance R t.
from there get Pp. Okay. Calculate CS model or RF model from from for formulation based on Reynolds number Reynolds number of model. Okay, formulation is same for both oh. different models. Then you will get RRM is equal to RTM minus RFM. Then you get RRS which is RRM into lambda q calculate rfs using previous formulation for ship reynolds number and finally you get rts is equal to rrs plus rfs we have got both of this RRS and RRS. So, fruit similarity law actually gave us a procedure for model experiments and extrapolation of the resistance data from model cell to full cell. Stop here. Thank you. William Fruit gave a formulation for uh, frictional resistance based on Planck experiments. He did a number of experiments on Planck's that is uh, of a particular length and height submerged in water and towed them and measured the resistance. Based on the Planck experiments, he gave a formulation R is equal to, mind you this is purely frictional formulation. F s v to the power n. This was the original formula. In the original formula, resistance was given in pounds, pound force, s was in feet square and speed was in feet per second. But now, you can convert the formula to metric units, f and n being two constants, where f n was dependent on length of the body, length of the plank and F was dependent on the surface finish of the plank. That is, William Froude was also the first person to detect that frictional resistance would depend on the roughness of the surface. So, since Reynolds number was not explicitly used in this, the n factor varied based on the length for which he conducted experiments for various lengths. And lengths were not very large, the lengths were up to a limit when you can tow it, tow it in a towing tank, mainly the towing tank at Torquay where he did most of his experiments in England. I will briefly tell you. If I write down C t is equal to 1 plus k, now I can drop C f 0 and write C f always meaning C f means two dimensional or I t t c line and when I write 1 plus k it becomes three dimensional. C r we have seen is a function of fruit number. It can be roughly said to be a function of a power of fruit number between 4 to 6. Okay. If I have this, I divide the whole thing by C f, then I get C t by C f is equal to 1 plus k 
plus c s n to the power n divided by q. So, then if I know this n value and this c value, then I can calculate 1 plus k, right. Now, this is now possible using some mathematical technique, you can fit a curve to the equation to a resistance curve, find out the value of n and c to the resistance and calculate the value of k. This is the other method which is also recommended by IPTC, but as you know since the errors are not constant over the entire speed range, measurement range and neither are there positive errors always, the error can be positive or negative. This type of fitment, regression equation fitment to find out what is the value of n and c can also give erroneous results or form effect. So, you are on the safe side. If you take form factor, then you will become more accurate and your power prediction will reduce. So, that is beneficial from the point of view of actual economy. You get it, but it is fraught with the danger if it is not estimated properly, then you may underestimate it. So, the k has to be estimated very well. If you are unable to estimate k properly, do not use it. That is the advice that can be given. So, if you look at uh, the towing tanks word over, you will find that some tanks use the form factor, some tanks do not use the form factor. ITTC has left it open by saying that the phenomenon of three dimensional frictional resistance effects are not very well known. Is that clear? So, now you do your model experiments, the procedure is known to you and you can extrapolate from model scale to full scale. Okay, we will stop here. Thank you.